we're trying to do these things called locally, they call them bichicoris, which is just basically dehydrating your pumpkins. And I've never done this before, as you can probably tell. And yeah, our pumpkins, they're just kind of starting to spoil slowly. So we want to, and we still have a bunch left and we want to just keep preserving the, the harvest. And you just basically make these strips when people tell you about it, they say it's like, oh, you get the whole pumpkin and you cut it up like in all like in a, in a continuous uh, strip coil thing, and then you hang it out to dry. But there's way more to it than that. I guess I was talking to somebody, and they said, well, first cut it out and clean it and let it um, dry out for a couple of days so it's a little bit more um, limber and it doesn't snap on you. And then, and then you're supposed to cut it into strips, and then you're supposed to peel the skin off, which I, mean, I did as best I could, but there's still some meat in there. So, uh, yeah, there's still a bunch of meat there, but I can't even imagine how to get that. I don't know. We'll keep uh, learning. No. Here we are, maybe 20 minutes into this bichicori making venture, and we've tried different knives. No. Rachel over there has found that the utility knife is actually pretty useful for that. And these are the ones that are all ready to hang. And we also remembered that there's a video out there of Jesus Garcia with the um, Mission Gardens in Tucson that I think shows how to do this. But we're going to find some internet later and look it up. Well, there's the first batch. We'll do a little bit more research and see how the technique develops because we still have a few more pumpkins to go. Smile for the camera. Second attempt at Bichicoris. Looking better. After two days of drying in the wire, uh, this is the result. Uh, this is called locally Vichicoris squash sun dried or no shadow dried. <laughs> and so here it is. Instead of canning and doing all that, we're just drying them and hopefully we can use them later when we want a soup. They don't look very yummy, but hopefully they preserve the flavor. Put in the soup, I guess. I don't know. We are going to try and see how we're going to use them. But it's basically with a lot of water. Our see. favorite little wooden spatula from the kitchen walked away and... Since we like to make things with our hands, we're gonna see if we can make another one really quick. And we're gonna, these are the tools we're gonna to use. This is just a very rustic maul. This is a rasp, a farrier's rasp to be specific. A little coping saw that we may or may not use, a hatchet, and a cross cut, cross cut saw. And we're gonna split it. And you're gonna take the maul, I'm gonna take the hatchet. Okay. And And you're gonna whack this part of the hatchet, okay? And what we're gonna do is we are going to just create a series of um, of cuts, okay. and we're gonna go go down the middle. So you're gonna whack it a little bit there, and then I'm gonna move, move the hatchet, and we're gonna do this a few times. So this is how it split, and it was kind of pretty half down the middle. So we cut um, these, yeah, we made these cuts on both sides. And now I'm just going to start knocking them out and see. I used the chisel to knock a little bit more off. Now I'm going to use the, the rasp. So 
there's that side more clean and you can see like this is what it looked like so now we're going to do this side now the process is just sculpting it and i'm using the that rasp you can kind of tell it's beginning to look a little bit like a spatula for the kitchen so i'm just going to keep working on it I'm just finishing sculpting this with the rasp, with the softer side of the rasp, and that's kind of the overall shape it's going to be. And after this, there's just going to be a bunch of sanding, a bunch of sanding and knocking down all the sharp edges, and we're going to call it good. Well, there's the final product. After about an hour of work and a little bit more of sanding, ready for breakfast. Howdy. I think a couple of videos ago I told you that our hive, our bees, were dead. Well, it turns out that they're not dead. Apparently they can hibernate pretty darn well. And we're going to open them up and see how they're doing. It's only my third time doing this, so please be gentle with your criticisms. Um, so here we go. The book said to give two puffs close to the entrance. I'm going to open this. And so this is the top bar method for keeping bees. So I got to the part where there's some comb and Last time I checked them in the fall, it looked pretty similar to this, but yeah, it looked pretty similar to this in that there's just some comb being built, but not not any not not much of anything else going on. And I just noticed that. The good news is that I don't see any of this cross combing it's called. So they're doing something here, but I can't really see the cells full of anything. Well, same thing here. Oh, there, if I put it up against the light, I can see better, but I don't know. So the bees are kind of starting to come out and they don't look too happy and it's going to be I think a little bit hard to put this together again seems like they're kind of pouring out and maybe just in time I'm closing this Okay, we will call that a minor success, that we ventured in and out and I don't think anything or anybody got hurt. I don't know, I have to Google this or ask somebody. <laughs>